of the monthly human resources report. Thank you, Dr. Johnson, Mr. McMahon, members of the Board of Education, Mr. Thurman. The human resources report for the month of January 2015 denotes the number of new contracted employees, new non-contracted employees, resignation and terminations for this particular time period. In addition to the human resources report, I have provided for you a teacher comparison vacancy report. A couple of things that I would like to highlight in this particular document that was distributed uh, by Mrs. Brown prior to the meeting uh, is the number of current vacancies we have. Please note that I have denoted within those vacancies we have a total of 15 recommendations. Uh, several colleges and universities will not confer degrees until this month. Therefore, individuals cannot be hired until their authorization sessions have been completed. So uh, we are waiting for those transcripts, but 15 have already been recommended and they are ready for hire. I have provided for you a district comparison in terms of vacancies uh, for this month. Please note that the Gwinnett site was unavailable when uh, trying to reference it earlier this morning. And Fulton County only post for a pool. So they may need 15 teachers, but they only have up one posting for teacher, and all teachers are funneled through that one particular posting. Please note that I have taken the opportunity to address and provide you actions which are utilized to improve services and the availability of substitutes. We had a number of individuals that spoke to uh, challenges with substitute teachers. Please note that the district acknowledges that we are having challenges with substitutes, but I also want you to know that as of today, we have a total of roughly 1,100 substitute teachers uh, on the roster, 450 who are certified, another 693 who are non-certified. We have an average of 380 teacher absences per day. So you can see with the 1,100 subs, there are more than enough substitute teachers to cover absences. Uh, the questions have been asked, you know, why are substitute teachers not accepting jobs? So the Division of Human Resources convened a substitute training on January 5th as well as the 9th to basically bring subs in, provide classroom management training, and to get that raw data from them to ask them, what can we do to enhance your substitute experience? We found a number of common themes uh, for which the substitutes told us, and we're going to take that information to the respective areas. But some of the main issues were the technology or the product that we currently have. So I've spoken with Mr. Brantley, and we're going to work throughout the next few months to look into selecting a new system that will meet the district needs. In addition to that, we are going to allow substitute teachers to select preferences, so as opposed to substituting throughout the district. If you prefer to substitute in a particular region, a particular zone, we're going to allow those subs to uh, provide those preferences. Last but not least, I have listed some interventions that we are also exploring. One, a new system. Two, hire an additional one to 200 subs by the end of February. We're also going to have a substitute teacher job fair uh, in February where we, sub teachers will actually go to the site. I have a convened a uh, committee of teachers, administrators, substitutes, and parents, and we are meeting as well, as well as provide principals with some idea for attendance incentives. Um, Mr. Orson, because I knew you always wanted to know, I always do a comparison by district to ensure or to kind of gauge where we are. In speaking with my colleagues, subs have been problematic in other districts as well, and I have listed the teacher comparison along with the salary, the training, and any notes that I felt were pertinent for you to know. This concludes the Division of Human Resources report for the month of January 2015. Thank you, um, Dr. Smith. Is there any discussion? Mr. Orson? Hey, uh, well, thank you for always interested in any questions. Obviously, I think we're probably all who share the concern. We have a s seemingly stubbornly high vacancy rate, and, and I, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but clearly, I appreciate you're trying to find new strategies, but I think we would all be relieved if we can try to figure out how to get this number down, because we're always sort of at the highest number, I mean, and I just like not to be the highest number. Um, the a couple of questions I, I, I do have about the substitute uh, supply, it's really actually an observation. I'm really, I'd like to learn more, and maybe now it's not the time, about what Gwinnett is trying to do about these full-time subs per school and what they call what you refer to as stellar subs. Because, you know, to the credit of Gwinnett can do some experimenting for us and there's some lessons to be learned, then perhaps we can tap into that. I, I know that there are, 
you know, particularly as we, quite frankly, as we build larger schools, there's probably more of a justification for permanent on-site subs because just the size of your faculty is probably going to lead to vacancies. And so I'd, I'd love over the next few months for us to get more information and to track what they're doing. And as you get updates, if you would stay in communication, particularly with them, just to see in real time what, what, what their experience has been. Any other discussion? I was Here, just, Chair. I, I'm sorry, I'm Mr. McMahon. Dr. Smith, I was just asking over from, and point it to me if it's on your report. How many new hires did we have from last month to this month on our international and domestic, I guess, or just teachers? Teachers? Overall? Yes, sir. The number of new contracted employees was a total of 21, but please note that this report had to be submitted as of December 12th. So any information that is presented here because of the time that we have to submit this information for the board is as of December 12th. Right. I remember that. We were truncated on our, <laughs> on our reporting there. Thank yes, you. Yes, sir. Further discussion, okay, uh, Mr. Jester. One of the biggest questions I get from uh, the most people is nurses. So I was hoping I could ask you a couple questions about the nurses. Do you know how many open recs we have for uh, nurses offhand? I will uh, refer that question to Dr. Vassan Tinsley. She is here uh, this afternoon and she's chiefly responsible for ensuring that we are appropriately staffed with nurses. Dr. Tinsley. Right, thanks. Hello, thank you for the question. Um, yes, we do have some vacancies in our nursing department. Uh, we have nurses in our elementary schools at this time. Would you say that you're fully staffed on elementary? No, we're not. Oh, okay. No, we're not because we did have some persons that left uh, because of relocation and things of that sort over the winter break. So we do have about three to four off the top of my head, and I don't okay. have my report in front of me. That's not too bad. But I'm, I'm happy to get that information for you. If, um, if you could, would you get that for me? Mm -hmm, absolutely. As, as along with um, the high schools. And do we budget middle school nurses? We do not. So all, all middle school nurses would be paid for by outside sources? At this point, we don't have nurses staffed in our middle and our high schools. But we have been working um, with the leadership, senior leadership, to come up with a proposal so that we can look at that possibly for the next budgeting cycle. I think we do have some nurses. They're just paid for by the PTA, aren't they? If they're paid for by the PTA, they're not employees they're of not the district. They're not our employees. Right, no. but nevertheless, we have nurses there. We're not aware that they're there because they're not our employees. Right. Gotcha. So we have paid people at the schools that we're not aware of? They're paid for out of the PTA, so oftentimes if the PTA elects to bring in a volunteer, we ask that they go through our normal fingerprinting process to sure. ensure that they are eligible to be here, but other than that- I'm familiar with that process. In, any other compensation is directed directly to the employee. It, they don't receive any benefits, any retirement, any of that information relative to district practices. On a sign, is there any, uh, insurance liabilities that we have with um, the district not having any oversight on people working at the school that we're not? They're ultimately volunteers who are paid for through those particular PTA funds. Oh, gotcha, yes, gotcha, sir. okay. And um, so we would not know um, what middle schools have nurses and don't? As far as the official record for the school district, right. we do not have nurses in the middle and the high school settings. Oh, in that high school too. Okay, so yeah, if you could just let me know on the elementary schools, that would be fantastic. Absolutely, I'm glad to get that for okay. you. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, this HR report was uh, printed out, I think, given to us about four weeks ago, which is a you know, a while ago. And uh, at that point in time, I had uh, asked for a, a digital copy of that, but uh, I didn't get that until a couple weeks ago. I think I asked a couple times, but uh, I was wondering what the the holdup on getting that to me was. Uh, Mr. Chair, any any idea? I'm not in operations. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the response on that, all information is uploaded via eboard, so this information is pu published and post after uh, agenda setting. So once it has right. been approved to move forward, I believe that's when the information is uploaded for your viewing. Sure, and four weeks ago I had mentioned that I didn't have access to eboards. I don't have that login, so I was going to need somebody to email me that document. And I never did uh, get that. Uh. Dr. Johnson, Mr. Jester, members of the board, um, as you very well know, Ms. Francois is on medical leave. 
Uh, but the issue is, is that uh, when the process is completed with Mr. Jester, he would get his login IDs and we are, we are waiting to complete that. So once we get that full circle process done and everything done, then I can done, get that. Uh, get all of your e access IDs to the eboard gotcha. application. Until then, can I uh, get emailed some of these uh, documents digitally? Would that be possible? We could work with. I mean, Mr. Thurman just get. But the we'll work with the chair to make sure you receive in and all information you need to continue until we get the issues resolved to the gotcha. board. Does anyway. Wonderful. Thank you, Mr. Thurman, and. Um, Oh, this document that we found on our desk, is this on eboards as we speak? Uh, no, sir. This is presented today of because I want you to have the most accurate, up-to-date information. As you can see, this report was pulled as of this morning. Gotcha. I can certainly include something, but it's so outdated by the time you receive this report. Um, at your leisure, can you get this up on uh, eboards? I will uh, forward enjoyment? it to the board office. Yes, sir. All right. All right. Thank you. Mr. Chair. Yes. I, I, but, but, Oh, Mr. Okay, Orson and okay. Okay. then Dr. Martin. A couple other quick questions about nurses, because you know that's one of my favorite subjects. And I'm encouraged, so I just want to confirm with the superintendent, I know we've talked about this, and you've had some ideas, including visiting nurses, and if not today, if at some point we could get an update, I'd love to see some, you know, particularly in the middle schools. And then I do have a quick second question about that. But I don't okay, know if you have yeah, we, we're looking at some innovative approaches. Um, okay in collaboration with Dr. Ford and the uh, DeKalb Department of Health, but those are ongoing. Right, because as you know, I can always personalize that subject. When my son just got braces and I had to send medication and then you have to have the right form and then there's nobody to administer it because there's no nurse in the middle school, I, I will share my life on an open platter. Um, the, the second, which I guess Mr. Jester in your response, and, and we might share with legal that uh, and I, I, this is not meant to discourage the PTA or any other group helping to fund positions, particularly nurses in our schools, but it seems to me that we might want to get a handle knowing who they are and clearing them even if we're not funding them because I, I would sense we might have some exposure for liability if they are operating in our building and appear to be operating under the authority of the school district. So I'd love to just make sure we have a system that protects us. I, again, I don't want to discourage any of that because that resource we bring to the table is great, but I also want to make sure that we are not exposed to potential liability. Dr. Morley? Yes. Uh, all due respect with our fellow board members and most certainly uh, Dr. Johnson, I think it would be quite prudent for the new board members to go through the training. Uh, I would like to not see us start off the new year with a lot of personal issues, because we get this information, we've had this information before the holidays, that if there are questions that need to be asked, that we contact the right person, and we have to be cognizant of the time that we're here for the board meetings and what the board meetings are for, and making sure that we actually follow the gui those guidelines and focus on what we need to focus on. But I think it's unfair that each time we have a board meeting that is drawn out with questions that probably could be ascertained and responded to before we actually get here at that particular time. So I would like to ask my fellow board members to please that we not go back down the same path, that we be uh, respectful of each other and respectful of the people and the time that we're here to be able to adhere to those things. And if we are not getting something personally, that we contact the person that needs to be contacted or go through the superintendent as we're supposed to and ask for what we need to have before we actually get here. I think that that would expedite this process and get us to where we need to so we can actually be at the task on hand and take care of the business of the day. Thank you, Dr. Marley. Any additional discussion? Uh, hearing none, uh, is there any opposition to placing this item on the consent agenda? Aye, uh, Judge. Mr. Um, so this item also will be placed on the, uh, as an action item this evening. Yes, 